Tuesday calculus class. Today is topic three, properties of limits. So today is just gonna be lots of properties and examples. All right, so we have what are called the limit laws. On <clears throat> the left-hand side, I'm gonna have the general limit law. And on the right, we're gonna do an example of that limit law. So for the limit laws, you need to suppose that C is some constant and that the limits as X approaches A of F of X and G of X exist. For the example, we're going to use the fact that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 equals 4 and the limit of g of x as x approaches 1 equals negative 1. So our first limit law is an addition one. Basically if you have two functions being added together and you're taking the limit of the sum of them you can split the two functions up and take the limit of the first one, take the limit of the second one and add them together. So for example, if we were to take the limit as x approaches one of f of x plus g of x, we can split them up. And since we know that this limit is four, this limit is negative one, I can go ahead and substitute those values in and simplify to get three. The next one is subtraction, the exact same idea as uh, the first one. So using our two examples, this time split them up, plug in the values, so four minus negative one, which will give me five. The third limit law is with the constant, the multiple constant. So if you have a multiple constant multiplying a function, since the limit does not depend on this constant, you can basically factor it out, take the limit of the function, then multiply by the multiple constant. So for example, <clears throat> if we had the following, two times the function as x approaches one, I can factor out the two and go ahead and substitute in four, since I know that's what this limit is, and two times four gives me eight. The next limit law is the multiplication limit law. So basically we have two functions multiplied together. You can split them up, take the limit of each one separately, then multiply them together. So using the same examples, we can split them up. We know that this limit is four, this limit is negative one. So plug them in and simplify, I get negative four. The next limit is division. Same idea, split them up, take the limit of each one separately, and then divide. Now since we have division, the denominator cannot equal zero. So in our example, we're gonna take the limit as x approaches one of f of x divided by g of x, split them up. We know that this is four, this is negative one, plug it in, and we get negative four. The next one is the exponent property. So this one is if we were to have a function raised to some power where it's a positive integer, so positive whole numbers, then basically you can distribute in the limit, as you can think about it like that. So you can take the limit of the inside first, then raise it to that exponent. So in this example, we're gonna take the limit as x approaches one of f of x cubed since I know what the limit of x as x approaches one of f of x is, which is four, I can raise the four to the third power to get me 64. Next one. Now we have the limit as x approaches a of some constant. So let's think about this one a little bit. If we were to look at the graph of y equals c, that's some horizontal line. So if we were to look at this example first, before I actually give you the answer, <laughs> here we have the 
function y equals 12. Well, that's some constant. Well, if we were to approach x equals negative 2, so here's x equals negative 2, and if we were to approach the left and the right side of this function, you should get the y value of 12. So since the constant's 12, and I'm saying that the limit's 12, then the property is c. So every time you take the limit of a constant, the limit is that constant. So this means that the limit as x approaches any value of a constant function will always be that constant. Now let's look at y equals x. So here's the graph of y equals x. And if I was to look at x equals 2, so I'm approaching x equals 2 from the left and the right side. You should notice that I'm also getting 2. So in this case, since x is approaching a of the identity function, that means my limit will be whatever x value I am approaching. So this means that the limit as x approaches any value of y equals x will always be that x value. Next property. All right, so now let's say we have the limit as x approaches or x approaches a of x to the nth power. So let's look at the example first. Let's say we have x squared. And we're looking as x approaches 2. So here's 2. x is approaching 2 from the left and the right. We should know that the graph is going to be approaching 4. So that means that we would have 2 squared, which gives me 4. And over here, that means we would have a to the nth power. So n is a positive integer. All right, our next property is the limit as x approaches a of n, the nth root of x. The exact same situation here, it's just with the nth root, where n is a positive integer. And of course, if n is even, we have to assume that a is positive, because remember, with even roots, you cannot have a negative number underneath. You would get an imaginary number. So if we were to look at this example, so we have the limit as x approaches 8 of the cube root of x. If I was to substitute in 8 for x, I would get the cube root of 8, which is 2. And this also goes for basically any function. So the nth root of f of x, just like in the other limit laws, we can kind of distribute the um, limit in and take the limit first and then take the nth root. So if we would take, for example, this problem, I can basically go ahead and take the limit as x approaches 4 first, that would look something like that, and I can go ahead and directly substitute in 4 for x, sorry, rewind, I can split them up because we have the property of um, the adding, I can take the limit as x approaches 4 of 5x separately from the limit as x approaches 4 of 12. Well, this right here, we have a constant, so I can factor out that constant, multiple constant, and here, this is a limit of a constant. So, so we know that this has to be that constant, which is 12, and I factored out the 5. We know that the limit as x approaches 4 of x is going to be that x value, which is 4. Then I got 5 times 4 plus 12, which will give me 32. And the fifth root of 32 is 2. All right, now here comes my favorite property, the direct substitution property. So this property says that if your function is a polynomial or a rational function, that's very important, polynomial or rational, and a is in the domain of f, then we can say that if we were to take the limit 
as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. So I want you to think about, go ahead and pause the video, and think about in your own words what this means. Welcome back. So basically, you should have said something along the lines that the direct substitution property is just as it says. If it's a polynomial rational function, I can just plug in a to the function to get my limit. And of course, simplify. So here is an example. I have a rational function, and we have the limit as x approaches 2. Using this direct substitution property, I can go ahead and plug 2 in for the x values. Go ahead and simplify to get 3 fourths. So that means that this limit would be equal to 3 fourths. And a small little note that's very, very important when it comes to the AP testing and how to write math is do not, under any circumstances, so don't be lazy, do not drop the limit notation until after you plug in the value. So notice here I have the limit notation. I plugged in the x equals 2. That is when I can drop the limit notation because after that it is all substituting. All right, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and post on Edmodo. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night.